Hi, this is Eric Durek, and welcome to this edition of Med Health Fit, the TV show that integrates wellness and healthcare. And tonight I have a special guest, Petra Bumer from the Mindful Eating Institute here in Santa Barbara. You are the founder of a very unique eating program. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Eric. Um, you know, recently I've seen a television show called My 600 Pound Life. Mm -hmm. And it has got to be one of the most depressing shows on TV because you see people who are essentially at wit's end. Yes. They they eat three pizzas for breakfast. They can't get out of bed. I mean, it's it's it, it, it is a terrible existence. And I think that in your work, you know, even even the title of your institute is the Mindful Eating Institute. So you're trying to make a connection between people's thoughts, actions, emotions. behavior patterns, emotions. Yes. So describe a little bit about how you came about developing the Institute mm -hmm. and the whole concept of yes. mindful eating. I have a master's degree in psychology from Germany and worked as a weight loss coach here in Santa Barbara for many, many years. Was very passionate about it, was assertive, would hold people accountable to stay on a specific diet, etc. Mm -hmm. And then in the long term weight management phase, I realized 50% of my patients would gain weight back. And it was because emotional eating was not addressed. So, long story short, I decided to follow my calling, which is to help people be at peace with food and their body mm -hmm. and not use food as a mood regulator. All my clients, I would say 90% of my clients know what they should be eating and don't. And what are the reasons for that? Mm -hmm. If you self-regulate with food when you're anxious, depressed, bored, worried, and eat, you numb your emotions and the actual emotion, the true core emotion doesn't get addressed, the problems don't get fixed. You numb with food like uh, maybe a, an addict would numb with a substance. Mm -hmm. Now, with addiction, with other addictions, we don't need to use drugs, but we need to eat, so it's a little bit more complex. Right. I was going to say that before the show, we talked a little bit about uh, late night eating. Yes. And I'm, once in a while, I'm like that myself. Yes. yes. I certainly don't think of myself as an addict, but, but you know. No, and not every emotional eater is a food addict, but there's some overlaps because I believe all of us have the need to nurture and comfort ourselves after a long day. Mm -hmm. And if you're following possibly the Blue Zones research, people who are 100 and older, the centenarians around the world, they learn how to downshift and dial down the intensity of the day. So when somebody struggling to lose weight comes home exhausted, wants to numb, take the edge off and relax and dial down and sit and eat. And it's a wonderful ritual. It's powerful. Mm -hmm. It works. Well, that's a little bit different. They're 100 years old. Their day ends at 4.30. <laughs> True. My day ends at midnight, usually. So, well, you know, so, I think so, so if you were my client, I would probably help you maybe end your day a little sooner and have a transition ritual for, from being on task to be off task and maybe shower off the day, play some music. I, I get it. You I mean, get I, it. I, I, yes. I get it. I, I, I've thought so about it. So it's a very I, vulnerable right. time for people who start eating late at night, especially after dinner, because they're exhausted. They yeah. need comfort. Mm -hmm. So I teach new rituals. I'm a lover of rituals, and um, new behavior can be formed. It's just a little longer process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, how did you come about this? I mean, you said you came from Germany. I want to explain a little bit about that. But, but you know, on a personal level, how did you go from the clinic to I can do this myself? Yeah, I mean, That's a great question. You know, Thank you. I've been in business now for myself with the Institute for one year. I'm successful. I have clients. I have a mindful eating support group on Monday nights for women right now, but hopefully for men as well. Mm -hmm. It was just my calling, my soul breaking through, saying this is what you need to do. This is my gift that I share with others. And I hope we'll talk a little bit about mindful self-compassion and how that 
is um, woven into my work. I mm -hmm. believe I, we'll get that a little bit later yes. because, um, like I say, I want to sort of build a foundation in that you know you, you I mean you came from uh, Germany's a long way away, and I think that internationally people's their concept of food and eating. I mean, everyone in America says, "Oh, those those people in France." Well, they, I they came have lunch here, for two Eric, in '94. Uh -huh. I went to the Sojourner, for example. Even though it was very healthy, the the portion sizes were enormous. Yeah. And I said, "This is just for me." And they said, "Yes." Welcome to America. <laughs> Welcome to America. <laughs> Seventy percent of Americans are overweight or obese. That's crazy. It is. Something is not right. Mm -hmm. So we need to fix that. <laughs> well, I mean, I. I'm I'm working on a, a, a concept uh, for a, a, to do some writing with a guy, and, and, and I look at everything. It's just like it's everything. So part of, part of the title is it's everything. It's you know the, the, the you know the food, how it's manufactured, how it's stored in in in, uh, in uh, you know the stores and stuff. How it's how it's you say how it's delivered to you in a restaurant. How much is thrown away, et cetera, et cetera. You know what's healthy, what's not, what's in a box, what's you know it, it's so. But you had you must have had like an epiphany. In, in that, you know, you worked for a clinic, you came from Germany, you came here and worked well, my to where you are now. Yes, my epiphany was when I lived in Germany, I was very blessed. My mom and I would ride our bikes to farmer's market. She would cook fresh meals every day. Nobody drove me to school. I had to either walk or take the bus. It was a different life. Mm -hmm. But now I think Germany is following suit and people are getting heavier and heavier too. The problem is we are super connected with technology. Everybody's looking at their phones all the time. Mm -hmm. There is a, a lack of connectedness and connecting with oneself. So a lot of my clients have lost touch with their true needs and they don't really know, am I hungry or am I, or am I stressed? What am I really in need of right now? So mm -hmm. the first key for our viewers is, very important key, to get away from emotional eating is to build in a mindful pause into your day and ask yourself, how am I feeling right now? How, how am I doing? What mm -hmm. am I really in need of? Mm -hmm. If you're hungry, eat by all means. Right. But if you just snack to take the edge off, mm -hmm. that's where I come in. Are you a three squares a day person or are you more of, you know, eat when you're hungry, make sure it's nutritious? Almost every two hours. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Quacko is my physician, and he gave me that recommendation. Right, he's mine too. He, <laughs> yes. actually, he never gave that. He never gave that recommendation to me. So it makes sense, you know. We want to be well balanced. Right. And I teach my clients. Maybe it's a little bit too soon to bring this up, but we talk a lot about the inner child. And when I say, imagine you had a foster child, going about your day with you, would mm -hmm. you not feed the kid? for eight hours and then overeat, let him overeat? Or would you say, honey, I made you snacks, make sure you eat them regularly, take a break when you need it. Right. You would help the child relax and be well nourished. So what I teach my adult clients is to be good mothers or good fathers to themselves. Mm -hmm. Being a psychologist, of course, I was trained to do that right. and it comes in very handy. Mm -hmm. Well. In America today, there are an awful lot of commercial weight loss programs, yes. Jenny Craig, etc. Um, how would you not rate, but mm -hmm. compare what you do yes. to the medical fasting programs, the commercial weight loss programs, all of these things that are trying to get people to just strip that weight off yes. right off the bat? Diets work, short term. Short term. Always short term. I have data to prove that and we all know yes diets are restrictive they help you they have structure but they are somehow punitive and don't take into account the suffering that's underneath the weight mm -hmm. most of my clients started getting messages about their body weight when they were seven or eight years old they were taken to weight watchers when they weren't even that heavy mm -hmm. so those old belief systems the old patterns that are still running need to be examined and let go of mm -hmm. so diets work I know Weight Watchers is, is building in more mindfulness and self-care but it's still a diet right. and I'm not teaching dieting I used to be a weight loss coach but that's my old self I'm no longer that person do you get a lot of people who went through a medical fasting program or Jenny Craig them now they'll come when to I, you I have a four-page uh, intake form and when I ask which diets have you been on everybody goes like well all every of all of them <laughs> <laughs> you know so that in itself is the answer diets are not the solution right okay well that no that makes perfect sense um, 
again, before the show, we were talking about, and, and you can call it a spiritual component or a self-reflective yes. component, but you, you, have this, you have this phrase here called uh, mindful self-compassion for weight loss success. Now, you've got to dive into that. Because I will. That seems like a, one of the most important It's the core, core piece of my work with clients. First of all, there is no quick fix. Right. People work with me um, for a minimum of three months, six months for sure, and I'm mm. even thinking about extending that to a one-year program starting in 2019. I was introduced to mindful self-compassion. Dr. Kristen Neff is a PhD psychologist teaching this all over the country. Mindfulness is a big buzzword. We all know what mindfulness is, being present, being aware, not being in the past or the future. Mindful self-compassion takes it a little bit further, which is paying attention to your heart, what you need. So if, if an overweight person wants to keep eating, I ask, what is your heart hungry for? What are you longing for? What is toxic in your life that you need to let go of? So in my intake form, people rate various areas of their life or fill out a life balance wheel to identify the strength and also maybe areas that need attention. Mm -hmm. So mindful self-compassion is teaching a client to be in touch with their true needs. And there are little exercises like the self-compassion break where when you're stressed or anxious and you want to eat, you can pause for one minute, put both hands over your heart, say this is a moment of stress and suffering. May I be kind to myself mm -hmm. in this moment. Well, I, I think that a lot of people, because food comes in a box now, or a bag, or at the football game, they have completely lost touch. I mean, there, yes. there, are, there are students in school right now that do not understand that the meat in the package in the grocery store comes from an animal. They don't know where it comes wow. from. They don't know what tri-tip is. It's part of a cow's muscle system. That's they sad. have no idea. Chicken is one thing because yes. I'm having a breast of chicken sure. or turkey for Thanksgiving. But a they total have, they disconnect. Can see a, they yes. have a total disconnect with certain <laughs> cuts of meat yes. and that it actually comes from a cow. And, and, and growing up on a farm, I don't know if you grew up on a farm in Germany, but no. I, in the Midwest, I, I, I spent time on a, a, a farm, uh, lived next to my grandmother. She had a barn and cattle and chickens and, and all this kind of yeah. stuff. And that you, re you understand, and, and I think there's a little bit of compassion for the animal because of you know course. it's time to kill the chicken. I think the Native Americans <laughs> would apologize or say to the deer, thank you for giving your life. Yeah, yeah. And, and in John Kabat-Zinn, and came up with mindfulness. He taught mindfulness meditation to his pain yeah. um, patients, you know this. Mm -hmm. And so there is a mindful um, eating exercise with a raisin, where you, yes. or chocolate. In my seminars, I bring dark chocolate. So you. usually you eat the chocolate, you gobble it down, but in the mindful eating exercise, you look at it first, then you put it in your mouth, let it melt, you don't chew it right away, you wonder where does the cocoa bean come from. It's a whole different concept, and you slow things down. Mm -hmm. So mindfulness is really the way out of day-to-day -day stress, making a healthful connection with your meal, making time to eat, making time to prepare. It starts with a mindful shopping list, and not wondering at five o'clock what's for dinner, and go right. to Hamburger Habit. I've done it, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not immune. But the more we plan and pay attention to our needs, our physical body, we need to treat it as a temple. Mm -hmm. Move it naturally, you know, and feed it well. Very true. <laughs> and you knew that when I came into the studio tonight, I had a blunder. <laughs> um, Good for you. <laughs> well, well, like I say, it's either that or, 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 or not eat for a number of hours, and I would rather and have I'm a few And I'm not perfect. You know, it's right. a daily thing to set an intention right. on a daily basis. Mm -hmm may I feed myself well, and some days we don't. Well, I'm, I'm getting better at it because after many, many years of, of um, uh, not packing a lunch, yes. I now pack a lunch most of the time, Good. which means that there's vegetables, there's a, a half a piece of fruit, there's things that are in there. I know that there's nutrition Good. in there, plus a half a sandwich. I don't eat a whole sandwich anymore. I eat a half a sandwich. And I know that, you know, I'm, I, I can actually almost in my mind see how many calories that there are mm -hmm. there. So I know it's going to take me through the rest of the day. Yes. But, it's fuel. But it's, it's yes. the fuel. But yes. like I say, I'm trying to get better at it because one of the other things we were talking about at the beginning of the show was, you know, 
our ages and you know I'm not as young as I was 25 years ago I could get away with everything sure I could get away with everything um, but not anymore not anymore me you know? neither so so back to the late night snacking you mm -hmm. said you do it a little bit a little bit a couple okay. nights a week so let's say you were my client I, I would ask you so tell me about your day <laughs> and Let's say you had a little boy at home. I don't know, you have kids, right? They're both grown. But yes, <laughs> but when they were little, let's say they had dinner and they had maybe one little treat and they went, Dad, I want more. What would you say to them? I would say no. <laughs> but how would you say it? How would you redirect that? that? Well, I would, I would say either you had something beforehand or you've already yes. had a lot of dinner. Right. Or... Or and you would probably when, distract them and say, Hey, let's watch a film or can I read something to you or... That's what we need to do for ourselves right. too. Right. Well, and, and you know, to, to give myself some credit, you know, <laughs> there are some nights where I'll go down at eleven o'clock, get a big glass of water, get all the vitamins. You're not doing then, anything uh, wrong. We're all in the same that. boat. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And it's because you know we live in a world. I, I just, uh, like I say, how far have we come? It, it, it's it's amazing. Like I say, you yes. walk into the store. And, and ninety percent of the food there is in a box. It's not really even food. No, uh, that's why I encourage mm. people to shop mindfully. Go to Tri County Produce, get some fresh stuff at farmers market, and mm -hmm. walk there. Well, we are pretty lucky here in Santa Barbara. We that are. We can walk to places. We can ride bicycles to places. Yes. We have what five or six farmers markets here. Yes. Many communities. Like I have friends in Phoenix, Arizona, and I don't know if they have any. I know farmers we're very markets. blessed. So yes. all that being said. Yes. Um, you know, you have a vision for mindful eating. So, so at your facility, uh, you know, uh, how do you want it to help people? Um, I mean, you talk about heart-centered, you talk about mindfulness, you talk about being present with food, but from the standpoint of really getting as yes. many people into your way of thinking, how, how, how do you get that to work? To get away from restrictive dieting, number one. Okay. Embracing each... Um, person's unique body image and shape and I want to let viewers know if they struggle with looking in the mirror embracing who they are to watch the Netflix documentary called Embrace. Embrace. It's a fabulous documentary about a woman who gained weight after her three kids, became a, a bikini model, was at a perfect weight but wasn't happier and then she realized all the other beautiful women weren't happy either. Mm -hmm. So it's a wonderful documentary to watch. So how do I want my approach to help is to let go of dieting, restrictive thinking, um, disconnecting people from from inner cues even more by putting them on another diet when somebody comes to me and said I want to do a 30-day weight loss challenge I say please don't it's not helping right because the frustration and the suffering of going another round and another is really really mm -hmm. hard on the psyche well there's 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 a level of renaissance that's going on in in the United States today, and on one hand, I look at medicine, mm -hmm. and I know we've got some great medical practitioners here uh, in yes. Santa Barbara. We have some really wonderful nutrition people here in town. We spoke about Jerry French, yes. who's been a mutual friend to both of us, yes. and who I just think is you know she's amazing. You know, she's very much into mindfulness, mindfulness, too, yes. farm to table. Yes. I mean, she's she's been sort of at, at you know the, the the relationship of diet to exercise, but I look at medicine in general mm -hmm. with tablets and pills and and shots and vaccines and yes. all these kind of things for, for weight. And then I look at, like I say, these medical, uh, the, these commercial corporations yes. who can give you a, a, a food bar or a chocolate shake and you're gonna eat that every day. And now I'm looking at health clubs mm -hmm. and health clubs are trying to get more into the, the, the nutrition aspect. Mm -hmm. And nutrition people are trying to get, like Jerry, yes. they've moved completely from just giving calorie advice like well you only have to eat you know, weigh your yes. food today to you know the the, the carrots versus the, the 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 rutabagas versus the the summer squash versus you know they're, they're educating these people on certain types of things like you know I didn't even know what kale was when I came to California <laughs> yes. you know what I mean so so there's this education process what I'm hearing what you do every single day and I think perhaps correct me if I'm wrong mm -hmm. but this maybe separates you from the commercial programs because the level of education is on an ongoing basis correct True, I do not 
claim to know what Jerry knows. And I do, we rarely talk about food, my clients and I. If you imagine a pyramid and weight issues are at the top, they mm -hmm. come, I want to lose weight, I want to lose weight. The real work is underneath, mm -hmm. the emotional issues. And I have to say what I said earlier, most of my clients could teach nutrition classes. They know a lot about it. That's not well, one yes. of the things we we actually spoke about was the the concept of yo-yo dieting, which has been in the news for 30, 40 years now. Yes, that people will lose twenty five pounds and gain forty, and then True. lose forty five pounds and gain fifty. True. What is your uh, sort of solution yes. to that? How how do you deal with the yo-yo mentality? Um, these are basically clients who come to me say, I don't have another diet in me. So I hope people hear this today that there is another way. It just takes a little longer. It takes a little bit more courage to dive into your emotions. But healthy rituals can be fun and we co-create them together. And so if somebody is really tired of dieting, the only way out is to understand why do I reach for food when I'm not hungry. Mm -hmm. It's like you take a car to the shop that leaks oil and you keep filling oil rather than fixing whatever the, I don't right, know, I'm not right. a car mm -hmm. mechanic, but go to the core. Right. And I do not treat eating disorders like an anorexia or bulimia. Mm -hmm. And I also don't teach that there are taboo foods like um, eating disorder programs. They don't teach taboo foods. I go eat hamburger habit fries and burger and a Coke once in a while. Mm -hmm. And I allow myself treats. Which, which is kind of the way it was when I was a kid. My father said, well, we're going to go to McDonald's sure. and it's a treat. Yes. As opposed to eating there. I know people that eat at these restaurants every day. Correct. And I think that that's where the imbalance and comes And if from. you lean on food, lean in quote unquote, mm -hmm. to feel better, to cope with life, that's where I come in. Okay. Now, we, we also discussed, you, you had a, 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 a woman who was a night nurse. She's yes. sort of your case study, do, and I, you want yeah, to explain like a little bit. Yeah, I'd like to explain. So, a so few minutes on that. Yes, and, and let's, I'll let's make it quick. Oh, but she came to me, um, was tired of dieting, and worked at Cottage Hospital, worked night shifts, which are hard in themselves, and giving to others all night long. She would come home in the morning and just eat, 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 to calm her nerves, to fill herself up from a hard night. And I said to her, let's try this. Maybe it works for you. Do you have a shawl or a scarf you could put around your shoulders in the morning? Yes, she did. Do you like broth, a low sodium broth or tea? No, she said, I don't like tea. I want to do the broth. I said, okay, let's try this one time. When you come home from a night shift, boil the water, sit for a moment on your sofa, on your couch, put the shawl around your shoulders. She had a beautiful bowl. She had this broth and sipped it slowly. That did it for her. She no longer had the need to overeat because she addressed the true need, which was comfort. Mm -hmm. Well, interesting. I have another example of a woman who couldn't drive by crush cakes without getting a sweet treat. But what I can understand <laughs> that. Yes. But what she really needed was a break. Uh-huh. Okay? Like the smoker would step out to get a break. Yes. The emotional eater also we all deserve a break and that's really the key. Well, you know, and, and I'll and I'll tell you that in Santa Barbara, mm -hmm. we have Janine's Bakery with some of the most delicious muffins ever. Oh, I know. Crush cakes with their cookies are amazing. They're, oh, Renault's. The, Renault. Oh, don't even get me started on that. that I mean, this, <laughs> oh, that, I go there for the croissants. Oh, it is amazing. Mm -hmm. So some, we have things. Uh, Anna's Bakery out in Goleta is a yes. favorite of many people at the university because yes. it's just so, I mean, it's just so good. And so when you have, and part of the problem with being in America is you have this big selection of really good things. Mm -hmm. I'm not just talking about cookies and candies no. and Halloween stuff. That's kind of crappy. But the, like Renault's is just wonderfully made by hand food, same yes. as Janine's. These people, so oh. I tell my clients, if you like sweets like I do, mm -hmm. plan for it. Say Saturday afternoon, I'll go maybe go to Chaucer's, look around, and then I go to Renault's and have a little cappuccino and the best tart of croissant they have. Enjoy mm -hmm. it and yes. sit. And no guilt necessary. My clients ask me, do you feel guilty when you eat a hamburger? I said, no, never. 
guilt and trash and sh um, guilt and shame should be trashed. Mm -hmm. Doesn't help anybody. Right. I could say. I mean, we have a lot of selections yes. here in this country, and now a lot of other places too. Yes. Um, so, uh, you know, you should embrace that. But again, uh, you are addressing an entirely different it's area. It's a completely different right. approach. It's a completely it's a com different. Approach. I'm not a nutritionist. Mm -hmm. I'm not an exercise physiologist. Those are great tools in the toolbox. Right. But if you keep gaining mm -hmm. the weight back over and over mm -hmm. and over again, right. I can help. And I've learned at my age, and a lot of other people yes. have learned, you can't exercise the weight mm -hmm. off. If, if you're continually Correct. eating more, you can't keep, ex you know, I can't, I used to work out three or four hours a day in college. I wow. just can't do that today. Yes. Um, it's but also embracing where we are in exactly, our lives. Exactly. And not, I don't push myself as hard anymore either. And I think that a lot of people who are older, they say to themselves, you know, I went without during the depression. Yes. I went without when, I, when my kids were growing up. I went without, and yes. now I've got, I, I'm, I'm retired, yes. I've got money in the I bank, know. et cetera. I can enjoy this a little bit more. So I'm 20 pounds heavier. But I think that spiritually, mentally, they're in a good spot. As long as you're not worried about, you know, your health is not suffering from that. Exactly. Right. I'm heavier than I was 20 years ago, too. You know, we're kind of the same age. And that's another part of embrace. Embracing and loving ourselves fully. Right. And right. not weighing yourself constantly, either. Yeah, I actually went from a, a point where I never weighed myself. And then my son bought a scale. <laughs> so when the scale was in his bathroom, I would go it's weigh tempting, myself. It's tempting, of course. Right. Well, now he's not at home anymore. He left this summer, so there's no scale, so I don't weigh myself. When anymore. I used to weigh, I would. it was a joke between my friends and I that I would eat kale, go to Zumba, and gain two pounds the next day. There it's like, go. there you go. Mm -hmm. It's not worth it. Okay, so we, get, we have about a minute and okay. a half. One quick tip that yes. you would offer someone to define yes. success. Unplug from... Oh. To define success? Their success. Yes. Um, and I think that you already have. I mean, you, you know, you, you talk about being in the present with your food and the, the lovely uh, story you talked about with your night nurse. Yes. You, 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 you made one incremental change with her and you opened up a new platform. Well, I think a s successful client will say, I no longer feel that food is my enemy. I'm at ease with food. Mm -hmm. I have a relaxed and healthy relationship with food now. I mm -hmm. don't count calories. I don't weigh obsessively. Mm -hmm. I embrace who I am. Okay. With the, with the, the 40 seconds we have to go, yes. give us a website. Oh, yes. It's www.mindfuleatinginstitute.net. .net. Mm -hmm. Okay. And your phone number and all that stuff will come up on the screen. Yes, and um, I'll be happy to give complimentary phone consultations if somebody's interested. Right. Petra Bloomer, thank you for being on the Thanks, show. Eric. The Mindful Eating Institute. This is Eric Dirac from MedHealthFit. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.